All right, what's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Strength Classroom. Today, I'm going to be talking about a couple of technique tips, exercise tips, whatever you want to call them, maybe like a how to video. So, today, I'm going to start off with ab wheel. Okay? Ab wheel. I remember I purchased mine for $9. It's nothing special, it's just a simple little exercise thing. I believe I bought it at Walmart. When I was in university, they did EMG studies between the sit up and ab wheel, and ab wheel had like something crazy like 15 to 20 times the abdominal activation than a sit-up did. Now, you only get this activation if you do them properly. And that's where this video begins. So let's start, number one, with the shoulders, okay? Not a lot of people allow their shoulders to fully extend at the bottom. They keep their lats like packed down and tight like they would a bench press or at the top of a pull-up. But this is actually the opposite of what you want to do because this doesn't allow you to get the full range of motion and it, it it will just feel weird on your shoulders in general you're kind of like crunching them up and then a lot of people complain that the ab wheel is bad for your shoulders which is far from the truth you actually get a nice decent stretch that makes your shoulders feel great now one thing what might allow you to stretch out further i personally don't like it but a lot of people have told me they do is if you use a false grip and don't wrap your thumb around the handle of the ab wheel. This allows you to get a better stretch. If you're having trouble getting that stretch, then that's something I recommend. The second most common mistake is as you are going down, people wanna remain in this upright duck posture with a huge arch from their head to their tailbone, which not only just places a bunch of unnecessary stress on your lower back, but it actually turns off your abdominals when you're stretched that hard because they're lengthened to the fullest degree right now when you have such a hard arch. So I know this sounds counterintuitive, but the ab wheel is almost like crunching movement on the way up. You want to keep your glutes squeezed as soon as you come up and then you want to round your back like a cat. Now I know this is basically everything you're told not to do in a deadlift, but the ab wheel isn't a deadlift. So you shouldn't be using the cues that you use on your deadlift with your ab. And also when you are round to your back, imagine you are pulling then with your lats inwards towards your knee. This is the best activation you can get and it's the best way to perform them. Now, what if a single ab wheel is too hard? What do you do? Well, I suggest that people can either get on their knees and just slowly walk out with their hands so you can, you're not being rushed and maybe lose control of the ab wheel. Step number two or progression number two will be to maybe get a foam roller and do the same thing but roll with your hands so it's a slightly different stimulus. And then you can move into doing some ab. I would start off doing them for low rep sets. Like let's say you can only do three reps, maybe do five sets of three, that's 15 total reps, 10 sets of three until you can add up the reps. Then what do you do if ab wheels get too easy for you? This is where it comes interesting. You can either add weight, which is my suggestion, and then you can move into doing standing ab wheels. I still haven't even attempted to do a standing ab wheel. If I were to want to work up to it, I'd make sure I could do a normal ab wheel with at least 45 pounds on my back. And then I would practice doing hand walkouts from a standing position before I went into this standing ab wheel altogether. You don't want to rush progression. There's no rush to get there, really. <clears throat> Any form of the ab wheel is good. So I'm still getting good core activation, even just doing the standard ab wheel that's unweighted. So let's conclude this video. Ab wheel, great exercise, great piece of equipment, very cheap, very affordable, should be in every serious gym goer, lifter, bodybuilder, power lifter, whatever you are in your gym bag. It's a great tool, very, very cheap, especially for what it gives you. Two major mistakes though, not letting your shoulders extend far enough and arching your lower back as you come down. This, both of these combined will give you not enough range of motion and a minimal, minimal amount of abdominal activation. Then if ab wheels are easier for you, you can add weight or do them standing 
or if ab wheels are too hard for you, you can do the progressions where I said you can walk out with your hands very slowly to get the stabilization and stability of your body. And then if that's too easy, you could use the foam roller variation. All of it is progression. Remember, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. So if you like this video, please click that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Share the videos with your friends if you think they'll like them as well. If you have a question, please drop them in the comments. And as always, classes.